International 2017, we are continuing our coverage here of the group stages. Infamous facing off against IGV. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Merlini. And Merlini, this game is starting to become very interesting for both of these teams. If Infamous, what, 2-0, they will secure themselves a spot at the main event, Ten seconds remaining. I believe. Mm -hmm. Fnatic are currently in a series versus EG, and they need at least one win there. So if on the other stream that uh, the game is going on right now, Fnatic can win one, and if Infamous lose all of these, then it'd go to tiebreakers. But otherwise, if Infamous can at least get one game, then it would have to be a 2-0 against EG, which seems very unlikely for Fnatic. Uh, but regardless, it's also really important for IGV. This is a team that would love to be able to put themselves in a position to get an upper bracket berth, and it's within the realm of possibilities, albeit a lot of strange things would have to happen for that to occur. They need a 2-0. Yeah. They need nine wins, at least. They're currently sitting 7-7 seven and seven in the middle of the pack. And Infamous taking a long time to ban a few things out here. They were given an Earthshaker, and they're going to take it. Night Stalker's in the pool. Oh, wait, didn't... Uh, IG Vitality... Empire let IG Vitality have Night Stalker yesterday. Yeah. And they actually will not fall for taking the Night Stalker, which they weren't particularly good with. And we'll take the Kunkka instead. All right. Far safer for them. I think it's a better position for for dog fights. Now the Ancient Apparition comes out, the other big hero that's been in these group stages. Granted, there were a lot of weird things that we saw in the series that we were looking at yesterday. It was like Lich and Doom, and then Ancient Apparition was the answer to that. Do you think the hero's strong enough just on its own as well to be worthy of like the first round pick? Yeah, for some teams. Yeah. It's sort of a, a weird one, like lacks a little bit of disable, can do a ton of damage in the lanes. Um, Unfortunately, it's not going to... Because ult's always going to be useful. Right. And if you don't want to reveal your cores because all you see is an Earthshaker, then it's okay. So Infamous, go for the first phase Phantom Lancer. This hero has been a hot point of debate as to whether the hero is garbage. What are these teams thinking to... That hero is passable. I never... I've never heard anyone call this hero OP in this patch. Yeah. So... I guess it only stretches so far, so if we find the median of all the opinions, he's still pretty garbage. Okay. <laughs> I'll say the median of all the opinions is like, he's like 35th percentile. All right. No, maybe lower. Maybe like 30, a little bit lower than 35, maybe like 30. But he's also like, uh, particular teams really like him. And I think that certain builds can fit well. The, the problem with first phase also is that there are a ton of counters to him, and that's really where the issues start to come up. So now, IGB have three picks to deal with it. Uh, you did really like Rezo's build the other day where he went treads on it? Hell yeah. Treads all the way. MP does bots, but that's MP. <laughs> it's crazy. So there's a Timbersaw and Sven, which I think are the main two. AM is also pretty good. Um, I think I'm, I'm almost positive they play Timber if they want to go for it. Pretty good versus PL. So so versus Shaker. Like, yeah, Shaker's a strength hero, but he has so much lockdown for Timber that it's actually a little bit problematic. The classic from Tomato uh, throughout the qualifiers was Queen of Pain as well in the, the mid lane that they would run together. They didn't run a lot of Ben Jazz Phantom Lancer from what I saw. Uh, so I'm really curious if they actually decide to stick it mid with Tomato or if they're going to give it to the, the safe lane. Hmm. Um, it's nice to be able to sort of dodge away from some of the ganks that could come from the Kunkka. He's a pretty survivable hero in a lot of ways. Which one? PL? PL? Yeah, he is, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's he's pretty good versus the Kunkka. There's also, uh, I've seen Axe kind of used as a counter for PL. Earthshaker is very good, but not available to them. Um, I'm sure I could find some better. I think Core Leshrac's actually pretty good versus him too. Oh. But I, don't, I only think LGD runs that. Well, for now, IGV, oh, they're going to go run. for the classic. That's, this is what they put, like, I think uh, one of the teams played versus Empire, and it was like, PL's pretty good versus both of these, Kunkka and Bat. So, I don't necessarily like their draft as of yet, especially when they respond with the first phase PL and you pick, like, normal heroes. Yeah, I wonder if IGV are just feeling like they can play a straight-up game against it, and 
you know, not too worried about the PL. But like you said, that does leave open a lot of opportunities. You have to be worried about the PL, man. Yeah. Can't just let him do his thing. <laughs> He's well, not as he's not as game changing as an AM, but he he makes the late game very mid the late game very hard. I kind of do see that you're talking about because I remember in that game like it was so hard for any of the heroes to deal with resolution. Now they're actually going to take an Oracle with this as well. It's uh -huh. pretty good versus AA and Bat, so I think it's fine. It's good. Okay. Definitely feels a little bit strange. It's good versus Kunga too. There's no physical damage, so Fate's Edict is. Hey, I'm invulnerable. This is great. Oh. Better than BKB. Not better than BKB. But, <laughs> I mean, lower cooldown than BKB, right? It's only like 2.5 seconds downtime or whatever. Yeah. The real question is, do you max that after Purifying Flames? Do you max it before Purifying Flames? Uh, I think having the Purge is really useful. You can dispel Cold Feet, Napalm Stacks. So I think 414 is the standard. I don't know, maybe you can do a mix, like... Like two two four or something like that. Yeah, two three four. I don't know. The cooldown used a little bit uh, lower as well. Well, third picks already out now. Um, Infamous with a little bit of a slightly unorthodox and IGV just sticking with their stock and standard approach to the draft. We'll see if they switch it up now. They're going to be the ones to take the Queen of Pain. Not normally the type of here you'd see Sakata on. This is not looking good for IG Vitality. Like, Phantom Lancer is a good matchup versus Quap, good matchup for, It's pretty much good versus all of their heroes. And then Weaver is also pretty good versus most of their heroes. I would say Kunkka gives Weaver a little bit of struggle, but I don't know. I don't like these these core-on-core -core matchups Five seconds remaining. Yeah. at all. It, it does definitely feel like IGV are going to need something big out of Paparazzi at the end. Um, maybe they play like, you know, four protect one and these four run around and do stuff around the map and then he like takes the morph lane again. Uh, there aren't any silences in the field right now. Do you like that idea or? Too slow, I think. Yeah. But it's pretty good versus PL, making an image of himself. Being out the LC, seeing what, LC plus Oracle, the duo that has can protect each other versus bat. Right. It's okay. Weaver can also build ags, but not that great if you don't have Drow on your team. Don't think they're gonna pick Drow. PL already on their side. Anti Mage, one of the what they banned out both of the PL counters in, in the in the one position room. So like infamous know what's good against PL and IG Vitality could have easily picked either of these heroes, but they're gonna go for a more five-man lineup. This five-man is very, very strong coming out from IG Vitality, so Infamous definitely needs some teamfight on match. Well, now it's going to be the last pick, Ember Spirit. I believe Matthew is the one that plays it for them here with Excel on the Oracle. Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit's also an okay counter. Whoa. Woo! Ah, oh, Paparazzi safe lane Alk. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, you talked about PL counters. This is not one that I traditionally think of, but he is a, a big tanky bruiser. He can probably survive through a lot of the damage that Tomato's going to throw out. Yeah, Alchemist changes the game completely. Last pick Alchemist. And they have AA on their side. And they don't have, like, huge bursts on Infamous. Everything is, I guess, only Echo Slim is really bursty. Phantom Lancer and Weaver don't add that like upfront burst that like Qual provides. I don't know. Alchemist, Alchemist with Kunkka, pretty common pairing too. You don't die, and you can just regen all the boat uh, damage off. Alchemist, I'm that hero is still a big question mark for me. I think it's in the same boat as like PL. As some heroes think a hero is amazing, some heroes think that hero is unplayable. His median's probably a little bit higher than Phantom Lancer, though. His median's probably like 40, 45 percentile. Okay. And I would say that IGV is probably the team that most people would say is the stronger one coming into this as well. Uh, Infamous has shown up and provided, like, really good games. Um, but I think Infamous is better. Personally. Really? Yeah. But that's just opinion. Fair enough. All right, well, game number one, our second series of the day, Infamous versus IGV. We're going into this. So you're saying that you think... Uh, are, are you believing more in the Alchemist? Are the, the rest of the pieces around that hero I don't actually enough? know how Alchemist uh, 
will work here, whether it'll be extremely good or extremely poor. The, my sample size for this hero post alk nerf is very small. I haven't seen it very many times at all. Um, the one time that I casted at this tournament, or I think it's been picked a couple times. One was a random by newbie, just scratched that out of the books. And then one time was an offensive uh, tri lane by LGD, and they had some minus armor to couple with it, so he could actually get some use out of his stun. Right. Uh, but this game, they're just gonna play him like a typical safe lane farmer. I don't know. I don't. I don't have high hopes for it. But I do think it's better than the majority of the cores that they could have picked. And if their lineup is going to be based around this Alchemist, I can see why they went for these mass four team fight heroes that can kind of weather the storm until Alchemist gets nice and completes his MOR build. Is it going to be a Manta Octarine Radiance, though? That's a good question. We've mm. seen the other one, which was like, I think, Shadow Blade. I remember back in the day, people would do like Solar Crest and. Stuff like that as well on occasion. For you might want Mjolnir versus the Phantom Lancer. Oh, yeah. But pretty bad because you usually just get purged off. So maybe like a fifth or sixth item for him. Infamous. They're going to walk forward and try and contest this bounty rune. Always a good decision when you're facing off against an Alkin. They are just going to run right into super, have the purge off as well for the long duration route. They might just be able to find a kill. In the meantime, though, Pop Ponzi, he doesn't care. He's trying to go over there and secure himself a rune. Unfortunately, Excel was able to steal that from him. So no rune. First blood going to Matthew. All looking quite good for Infamous. Yep. Aggro versus Alk. One of the problems is his laning phase is just super hot garbage. Like steaming pile of waste. He is the personification of the poop emoji if you don't have any sort of way to back him up. And Alk AA is an awful lane, and Alchemist is also skilled up Grievous Greed first. So this is... I don't know what's more stinky than that poop emoji. But that's him right now. That's the Alchemist. That's what it is. Man, golden fuck. poop. Golden poop. I mean, he's not going to be getting that much gold if they keep this up as well. Uh, they do have Ancient Apparition here, but uh, the potential to hit damage out with Chilling Touch or anything just seems very unlikely. I mean, do you even start thinking about rotating the Kunker, but does dogfights even do enough? You just dodge lanes, dude. Just get out of there. Just go versus the, <laughs> go versus the Weaver. You just have two, two on one down there. Or you can just have zero CS. Or actually, just two CS. So maybe get some CS. He doesn't have Quelling Blade. He does have a Mango. I guess he's going for the Soul Ring. But I don't know. I don't like his chances up here. I guess as long as he can get out acid spray, maybe there's a potential for some, but it also will push the lane for sure. And now the roll in, they got him caught a little bit off the mark from Matthew. In some trouble, but the root's gonna come out. Chilling touch to turn. Will it be enough? It looks like the answer is no. And in the meantime, Super also in trouble. They're manning up against him as well. They do have a roll forward in another second here. They block off with the Fissure. Super in trouble and most likely going to fall. They get the stun out as well. Dogfights wanting to do anything at all, and they're going to TP away. Do they even find a kill on the Earth Spirit? No. Talk about hot garbage. Steaming hot <laughs> garbage. <laughs> the hero is just... I think he's probably one of the worst safe laners if contested, uh, and you don't have like I, I really did like the vent that they picked with it, but yeah, this tri lane is just actually it was just a duel. Game. With the tri lane, I think it's fine. It's like passive. Yeah. If we have to talk about percent. It's like 15 percent on lane. <laughs> actually, that's not passive. That's not a passive score in any school metric. That's a, that's a pretty bad one, actually. Oh, and no, they actually didn't get the full uh, pull off. So a couple creeps are going to escape. It's going to be sort of a wave and a half pushing in uh, on top of the acid spray so to make sure they get that if they want to keep the equilibrium in their favor which they certainly are going to need to um, at least they're able to pull a little bit yeah that's nice the most garbage lane i've ever faced i would rate at the worst zero percentile just the bottom was a meepo wisp dual lane of all my days of dota it was the worst paparazzi they even stole the creep from him with that fissure. His CS is actually the highest in the game, so that's pretty decent, I suppose. Yeah. If they can feed him bounty runes, this lane could go okay. But he lost his clarity. 
He's been able to dodge, I believe, two boulders already. It's yeah. pretty good for him. And what about these other lanes? It's been uh, Super Ben Jazz down here bottom. He's also very high CS at the moment, able to easy lane. beat out the Weaver or that rider a little bit. Dog fights is in a little bit of trouble again. The sun comes through for Matthew. He will get the cold feet proc. A really nice totem was able to find a catch there as well and get the stun onto three of them. Seeing if they can take down Super as well. The damage coming through. Excel trying to dive for this purifying flames. Going to connect. Going to get the kill. But it comes at the cost. Paparazzi gets a kill. And Matthew might also be in trouble. He does have a roll in four, and dogfight's looking, but not finding. He is going to roll into him now, and Matthew's just barely able to make his escape. Well, maybe can maybe kill him with a spray. Let's see if he can do it. Torrent, a little bit off the mark. He needs to drop down another stone and go for a boulder smash. It's damaging him over time. Nine HP. They purge it off trying to run, but it was not enough. They found the kill. Whew. That purge came out a little bit too late. Actually, does Cold Feet tick instantly? I don't. I think it takes an instant. I'm not positive. I need to double check that. Okay. I think he like thought he could purge it off because it doesn't do anything with that spray. Yeah. Yeah. It starts immediately, I guess. So I don't think he was he was able to survive there. Nice. Nice try though. I mean, they did end up finding some kills, but it wasn't on the paparazzi, and he's now been able to get two assists on top of a kill of his own. He did get some Grievous greed. <laughs> okay, how's the other lane going? Quap versus PL. Looks like PL's actually not owning, but still even. Weaver's owning bat. They're gonna go up top again. Infamous just keep on trying to force this a little bit. Although Quinteca almost gonna be able to take the courier down. They do manage to get it. The perch comes out yet again. Earthshaker in trouble. The stun comes through onto two. But showing the strength of the Kunkka AA. Nice, they're finally getting some stuns. So now they have enough lockdown to actually lock people down in close speed. Yeah. Matthew, pretty close to dying there. By the skin of his teeth, he gets away from that one. Does look like infamous. They want to come back up and, well, a big creep wave moving in now. They tried to get the pull off. Not quite going to be there. Do you need to switch up your angle of attack from infamous now? Like, it's starting to feel like they're getting less than... IGBR out of these fights. Another roll. Queen Tekka, he's going to get caught by the torrent. They have the cold feet on him as well. Paparazzi, though, in trouble and looks like he might just die getting blocked off. They find the kill. And Queen Tekka able to make his escape as well before he goes down. They just need to pressure him. Slow down his radiance timing to like 20 minutes plus. They're on a pretty good path to do that. It looks like Super might die here. Not that they have enough burst. Nice kick away. Wow. Now always on the ball. And Excel, he's going to take some damage, but should not be in too much of an issue. They do not have a shrine to work with since they've already used it. That's just, that's sad. That would be a great shrine to use. Alchemist almost six now. So I, I you mentioned, should they change their plan of attack? I think it's about time to do so. Because of, uh, because of this level six timing that just makes it really difficult. Like Alchemist can actually start running at people and right clicking them. And they don't have that much armor in that lane. Maybe even thinking about like a just casual Bassy for somebody, but who do you really pick that up on? It'd have to be like into a Vlad's or something. Which doesn't sound that appetizing. They already have one on Weaver. I would say maybe I'd throw the Weaver up there and then put the Shaker on bottom. Uh, so, so Shaker can actually get some farm because Shaker Shaker almost has Soul Ring, which is pretty decent. But I don't think he can really pressure the Alk anymore. And he's getting off the stack. King Tekka, go! Let's get over there. I want to kill off these guys before he can summon more creeps as well. But, well, it's not going to end up happening. He does pull the creeps back past him. And he missed out on some XP. And they missed the D-board. Well, they're actually going to completely switch things up. So they're going to stick Matthew mid. And realizing that the six is there for Paparazzi, uh, they don't want to contest. They instead just want to get levels and... Tomato hang off to the jungle. Do you like this decision? Yeah, they need levels. Aggro try. Big downside, you can't pull safely, and your, your supports are going to be under level. So they're already trying to switch things up. They want level 6 on the Oracle to deal with the Bat. They want level 6 on Earth Spear, so they have stronger team fight. And again, now that Alchemist is 6+, plus, he's a much more difficult kill. And 
your early game is is pretty much done in this lane. Your laning phase in top is not really a lane anymore. Well, they have gotten out fairly even. Infamous about a thousand gold ahead, and it's also been Tomato with a ton of farm mid lane uh, against Kata, and he might actually just end up going down. The stun comes with the silence follow, and Matthew making it happen with that invis rune. That was a kill that likely could have happened without the invis rune, but with the invis rune, super easy. Sakata. It's, a, it's it's really tough dealing with PL because PL like. You don't know when a gank is coming, because he, he's going to run at you and he's going to constantly cast Spirit Lance on you anyway. So he had just no idea that the gank was coming. So now they're going to rotate some people up to top, but not really enough to threaten out. I was wondering, they're still going to go maybe try and find some support kills here or something along that vein. Uh, it is only 30 seconds until they would have had the Tome and maybe could have gotten magnetized out on top of this, but they're going to run into Paparazzi. A good bit of damage coming out. The regen, though, is going to be there, and they weren't able to get the silence off on time, so Paparazzi self-stun. Can they get into range? Kinteka wanted to go in for the Echo Slam. They could still do it if they X him back in just a second, looking for that opening and the possibility. A lot of damage. Super is going to go down there, and Paparazzi, his ulti is starting to wear off soon. They find the kill. Nonetheless, Sakata is going to find the kill in the Oracle in return, but it's a hell of a lot to lose as Queen Tekka just saunters on out of there. That was a very slow silence from Earth Spirit. He should have been able to silence. They were smoked, so they have the element of surprise, and I think they saw him before the Alchemist saw him, and he wasn't able to get the silence off, and him getting Chemical Rage off made that fight last way longer than it should have. He would have died, uh, I think, as soon as the Fissure uh, came out if he had that silence up. But still, they made the best of a bad situation and still got the kill on the Alchemist, which is pretty big for them. Also, IG Vitality, because they got aggro, tried haven't been able to Ancient Stack at all. So Paparazzi has to deal with a solitary Golem Stack at sad times. And you look across the net worth tabs now, it's Phantom Lancer at the level 10 point. Does have that attack speed talent instead of the Lance damage and is going for the Boots of Travel, so a little bit less fight oriented. Oh, my man, dude. Attack speed. You like that? Dude, attack speed. My opinion is always better. Oh, the rolling silence from Matthew. Didn't follow up with the stun, though. Yeah, it is, uh... He didn't have a stone for it. That, yeah, that sucks. Well, the thing is, if you pull, yeah, you should have a stone to mm -hmm. kick. So, I don't... I, I didn't see exactly what happened. I think he just stepped a little bit too far away from it. But yeah, it's... It's tough. He's no Tims. Hero's still pretty good, though. I mean, showing that even not played to absolute perfection, able to get a ton done in the early game. Yeah. Yep. He's been at the right place at the right time. I would say that's more so than anything else. Uh, what's been the cause for his success? <laughs> oh, I have Matthews muted. <laughs> you really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I remember casting like a one of the South American games. It was like I had five players muted of the ten. <laughs> I'm fairly selective with my muting yeah. too. Sometimes people are just like super annoying and they just like talk too much, which I mute them. But for the most part, I only save them for super unpleasant players, right? Or people who just throw and feed yeah. intentionally. Well. I'm sure nothing like that happened. Maybe it was just an accident. Positive. <laughs> no, they're notorious <laughs> for <laughs> being bad, man. Lyrical. That's fair enough. Well, Paparazzi retreating again to the jungle, as we were talking about earlier. He's going to have that armlet brought out to him now. So one of those items that allow him to catch back up again. Has there been any changes to Alk's talents? I want to see if he does anything funky uh, this time around. I think one of them got minorly put, maybe like unstable concoction damage. But Paparazzi, oh, and the ulti is just about to wear off. Actually, it's at about a third duration still left over, and Dogfight's coming in as well. He does have his level 6. The boat that could come through would be quite large indeed if they manage to find it. There's the lift up. Damage being dealt. Sonic Wave as well turning it. It only killed off Matthew and Kriteka. Gets that blink out revealed in a big old way. Oh my god, he has blink already? Holy crap. Crap, they're in a bad spot. Six, two, and five on this Earthshaker. He has had a fabulous game. Blinks forward, finds that Kunkka. He can taunt all he wants, but it's a triple kill for Queen Tekka, and Infamous are happy about it. Brutal, savage. That was also a super slow TP reaction. Alchemist. 
got he spotted out the enemies pretty much at the bounty rune, and then by the time he was at this T1 tower, no T heroes had TP in. They hadn't even started their TPs, and then Quap, as soon as he like rounds in vision of the T1 tower, maybe like 800, 900 right away, then Quap TPs in, and then a few other people TP in. But that was just way too late to save their alchemist. I think they were maybe unsure about like how long he left on his chemical rage, and if he doesn't have it on, he's just dead, even if they do TP in. So. I don't think that was a particularly easy situation for them to read. Yeah. But if you're paparazzi, you just yell at your team. Take me in, save me, <laughs> ping, 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 ping. Uh, well, and uh, Infamous just making the right rotations, too. That's a big part of it. Like, understanding when their timing was that Quinteca was just finishing up his blink dagger right there. This is looking quite good for them as rotation into the jungle. Tomato is left alone. Do they realize which one is? The doppelganger away. He's able to make the escape. They don't know which one is the real Tomato. Oh, no, no. GB in a little bit of an awkward spot now. And if Matthew can catch up to them, as well as that Earthshaker. How did he see the Tor? Maybe he just saw the bat. I'm not sure. Well, they have found a Kunkka now, and that is going to be at least a slight consolation prize. IGV not in the position they would love to be, and in fact, they might just be able to find more off of this. Do IGV really want to fight at this point in time? Sakata's rolling away, and Super barely able to make his TP finish. IGV just do not look on the same page at all. GG, Pat, Blink reveal. GG what reveal? Bat Blink oh, reveal. Okay. Normally, yeah. Bat Blink smoke guaranteed kill. But they, they try to. They went for the high risk, high reward play, going for the PL. PLs and PL and Weaver are the hardest to catch. I would say Weaver's even easier to catch because you can just dust him, kill him in a lasso. Oh, they're getting the nothing. Silence, dude. the stun. They're just keeping him back, and dogfights and super on the wrong side. That being said, they have the false promise that's keeping alive that Earthshaker for the moment. The Ice Path is going to be able to catch at least onto the Oracle. Don't know if it's going to be enough damage with the Sonic Wave. It certainly will. Now Ben Jazz, they're thinking about going. They've got this ward in the area, but now being dewarded, they shouldn't have the same level of comfort. Still, the PL hasn't really been able to do anything in the fights. He went for a BOT build and still doesn't have Defusal, nor does he have Scepter, so he's still going to be quite a bit away from being able to really deal any damage in the team fights. This scepter is gonna be pretty annoying for them. Oh Alchemist gets solo killed by Shaker. Nice observer ward up there. So Raiden's recipe was bought, but he's still a little bit of Yeah, and Earthshaker is actually already has the shadow amulet ready and Yeah, he is way way too far. <laughs> oh my god, Earthshaker. <laughs> PL has been free farming for like the entire game, he has 128 CS, and, and Earthshaker's really close to a net worth. And he has not that much CS, but still pretty high. King Tekka at TI. He's making it happen. Hey, you go, Earthshaker. So, 16 minutes in, 16 kills to 7, and a 4,000 net worth lead. But more importantly, Roshan's starting to go down, and no great way for IG Vitality to come and try and contest this. This is, again, one of those games where they really need to win it if they want to have a shot at that upper bracket. So that would be disastrous. And now, the Aegis on Tomato. Debating whether or not the PL is actually going to make use of this Aegis. He's... Tomato's generally the highest value player on their team. Highest net worth and most support in case he actually dies. But this game, I still think he's going to be farming for the next few minutes. Yeah. So I, he's going to have to fuse. I guess he can just run in with Phantom Rush and start right clicking people. And then he's probably going to die if he plays it that way. So I guess it allows him to play it in a different way, which is good. Oh no, paparazzi. They're going to hit him here. That's going to be the fissure. They connect. Matthew silence, but with the rotation in and the armlet there as well, you get it onto two. Matthew's just going to run away. It does reveal the shadow blade, but now Tomato's showing up like they want to fight this. He is fighting against Super, dealing a hell of a lot of damage. The torrent boat actually doesn't connect onto the real PL. Oh, how unlucky. And now paparazzi in more trouble, getting mana burned. Everything is going wrong for IGV as infamous, just hitting hard. Hitting fast and taking the kills. Yep, now that he has the fusel, things are looking even worse for Alk, who still does not have Radiance. 
Yuck. Okay, he's not going to accept her. Nice. I have personally not the name. Or the spirit lays down. But Angelai also going to die. But Tomato might end up going down himself. Look at him. Is he going to die to that? All right, that's just the Aegis at least. But yeah, it's fine. All right. In a team fight, he can get saved by Oracle. Oh, 19 to 8, and Sakata doesn't live in his own jungle anymore. He's placing down some wards and trying to just keep whatever he can for his team. I mean, what do you do at this point if you're IGV? Like, it feels as if they've tried to just give him the out the safest farm possible. Once it gets Radiance, things will go a lot smoother for them. Relative to what's going on now. Okay. Not smooth in the absolute sense, but smoother. All right. We'll just have to watch and wait. Um, do you think about going for like a smoke gank with the other four heroes, or is that too big of a concern? When you get radiance, okay, that are so weak right now relative to infamous. If they can get the oracle, maybe, like if they can last with the oracle and blow them up, and then get a good boat on four or five of the heroes that are going to run in, I think they can win the fight. But I think they need the radiance for the extra damage because now they have damage issues. Queen of Pain has not had a particularly good game. Two deaths. Alchemist has had a very poor game. Okay, he had a bounty room, so there he goes. Tournament Radiance. That's very slow by Alchemist standards, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that's like okay by it's like their heroes. <laughs> it's probably like 10th, 15th percentile, I would say. Because normally he has... I would say a good timing is like uh, 12 minutes. Maybe, I, I think I've seen some 12 minute Armlet Radiances, but he had he also had to go to Treads, go for Treads, so I guess that adds a little bit for his network. But here they go, high ground push. They are not sure if Alchemist has Radiance right now. They're pretty sure he doesn't have it, but he has been missing off the jungle for, oh. missing off the map for a pretty long time. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah Quap. Quap. I was like, where her Shaker going? I looked down there and Quap is dead. PL's really bad at hitting high ground. And they're going to have to let up Ben Jess for the but Benjes does not have Aegis, nor does he even have the Lincolns. So this is a pretty dicey play from them. And they already got they already got what they wanted. They have IG Vitality back in their base, they have Quap dead, and they know that Alchemist has Radiance now, so probably not the best time for them to push as soon as he hits that. Well, IGV also realizing they can't just stay in their base, they've gotta go out and make something happen. So they are going to smoke out within July. Already using the Firefly though, this has kind of a low chance of success, I feel like, unless it's a pretty big misplay. You can see Infamous there scanning over, or rather Dyer is scanning to see if they'll find him. Tomato? They're gonna run into him. In July spots him. They're able to catch onto that PL and immediately gonna be brought down. The Ice Path this is actually not quite gonna connect there, and he's able to just jump away. Oh, that is not supposed to happen. Awkward. Real awkward, and they spot out Paparazzi, but they can't really go on him with Benjaz. Kind of doesn't matter. It's a hard gank to pull off. They have to blink Lasso into Torrent, Cold Feet, and then Boat. Uh, but if you mess up any of those, he'll be able to do double ganger out. Right. Or if Earthshaker is there, he can also double ganger out. Or if Oracle's there. But they did have a pretty good observer ward up there, so it was it was a good move. And they're just creating space for Elk to finally catch up in net worth. He's barely number one. Barely. Not for too much longer, though, as it looks like they're going to be going forward. Maybe a turnaround if they could kill off that Earthshaker. That's a hell of a way to start it. The two-person stun, though. Magnetize out as well. It's not enough damage. That's a big, that's a monster kill. Super gets 900 gold for that. <laughs> Super hasn't had that much gold in the past couple games. Oh, my God. Would have loved to get it on your Alchemist, but... Uh, I think it's actually more important to support. Because really? Alchemist just farms like 800 gold to him is like, it's like one, it's like one group of creep camps. Whereas Ancient Apparition, 900, he had 1600 gold before, so he's he increases net worth by like 50, more than 50 percent by getting that one kill. Like relative to how much you can actually farm, I think it's way better. Because Al can just get bounty runes. That's fine. He's he's meant to be able to get huge amounts of gold. I have found another. Oracle is going to drop at the start of this fight. PL immediately going to be pushing through the top lane. 
You know, there have been a lot of these matches where teams have looked like they were in really dire straits and then were able to come back afterwards off the back of solid play. Do you feel like that's going to be the case in this one for IGB? Oh, well, speaking of which, there actually might be a pretty quick kill there. My god, King Tekka is just a monster. And now Super Benja shows up. He's going to chase down in July. And uh -oh. Angela has gem. Oh, this no. Is disaster all over the place. That being said, the rest of IGB is here. Are they really going to be able to just 2v4? Sonic Wave comes out. They're kiting and controlling that Earthshaker. Where's their team? Hello? Oh, Tomato ended up TPing top earlier, but he has bots. He has bots. Oracle also wasn't there. They could have used the False Promise on the Earthshaker right there, but some miscommunication there. I will say Infamous teamwork is not particularly great. I think their three cores are excellent players and probably better than the counterparts on IG Vitality, but I think their support support core is way weaker. A lot of misspells and just generally in this mid game, like where were they for that fight? They're supposed to be there. Yeah. Where where else are they gonna be? Earth Spirit did finally finally farm his heal, so that's probably the answer to the last question. Oracle he's had he's had eight months for a while now. But if they could have gotten that gem, oof, would that have been glorious? And well, Batrider dies, but he didn't have the gem on him. Where was the gem? Wait, did they? Did they pick it up? I don't know what happened to the gem. Let's take a look. Oh, it's on, is it on the courier? Okay, it's on the courier. Probably for the best there, keeping it off of in July for a little while. Wait, that was... Oh, that was Oracle's gem that he gave to the ES that they gave up when they... Killed the Alk. Oh no, that's even worse. It's not, <laughs> it's not even infamous, or that's not even IGV's gem. All right. Yeah, it's not the best. Well, Queen Tekka is here. They also have Matthew in the area. Do they spot him out? Yeah, they get a quick view of the Earth Spirit. And he's going to roll forward, although they're going to have a lot of time to respond to this. There's also the Yule Scepter lift up at the same time. The ice. Blast goes out, and Matthew going to be forced to run away. Benjaz shows up. Paparazzi gets the self stun. Queen Tekka looking for that opening. He does have Echo Slam in one more second. Does he want to go for it? He jumps forward, finds Dogfight. Doesn't fully commit it as of yet, but the boat did go out. Able to connect onto one, but Benjaz, he finds that kill onto the Alk. Through it all. Sakata now lifted up. Going to get stunned as he comes through the other side. Echo Slam if they need it, but... It's all gravy right now for Infamous. They are dominating IGV. Oh, God. Paparazzi also used his BKB and died. Oh, Lord. All right, in July, in some trouble, rooted and killed. And still no Echo Slam needed. They do find an Ice Blast onto King Tekka, but to what end? This is going to be a Tier 3 tower dropping, no buyback. 26 minutes in, Infamous are looking spectacular. How to deal with PL. I some of these teams have no idea how to draft against the PL. That was its just very strange to me. I mean, the hero is weird, but not that strange. But maybe they went into the game like, hey, we want to run an Alchemist strat and didn't really care about what the opponents picked. I would venture to say that's probably more so the case. Yeah. Also, Infamous did have a stroke of genius with the offensive try to just constantly destroy the Alchemist. They also gave a lot of the kills to Earthshaker, I think unintentionally. Usually Oracle gets all the kills in the lane because of pure fighting flames, but uh, King Tech was able to get a lot of a lot of kills and that early blink I think just completely blew IT Vitality out of the water. It felt like it was much more the Earthshaker that was like the game changer. Like yeah. Tomato could have almost been any other hero yeah, that he traded in his lane. But right right now though it looks it yeah. looks good for him. <laughs> like you'd rather have PL over a lot of other heroes. He did dodge a couple of those ganks though. Right. The Bat Rider. So, like, I think having your cores die, like, if he, if they had a successful smoke lasso on the PL, maybe they could have gotten back into the game. Rainy has you scan, hits red, and they are not scared because it was too late. Tomato gets the Aegis, Benjaz gets the cheese, they even got Bash from Roche, but they don't give a hoot. They are pushing for more. 15,000 net worth lead and right around 18,000 experience. GV grasping at straws at this point. Yeah, PL, uh, PL can just run up there. I think IG Vitality were out of sync. So uh, DD Arcane Rune Phantom Lancer. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's a tough one. 
And we do also have for our Earthshaker the 40 plus echo damage. They are not going to be able to live long on IG Vitality's side. This just looks like it's going to be a slaughter. The highest proportion. Yeah, it's going to look really bad. <laughs> uh, if Alchemist gets his BKB off right before the echo, it could go instantly. And it's not that unheard of. I, he, he should probably just fissure into echo. But sometimes you see a good echo, you don't want to wait for fissure. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, pressuring high ground. They're going to send in those illusions. B Tomato is going to be the one that walks up front and center and tries to hit it. Of course, Acid Spray is so hard to push high ground against, but with the Illusion Spam, they continue to make this happen pretty effectively, I would say. And the tower starting to take the damage. In July, looking for an opening. Benjez does have the Lincoln Spear, so it's hard to make it work. And Cold Feet, able to take it off. X marks the spot onto Tomato, but he's not going to take any magical damage. Fate's Edict keeping him alive. The roll off to the side, though. They've caught themselves in July. And that's going to be a quick and clean kill. You can't do it. That is not the type of wraparound that you need to make. And IGB still grasping at straws. Infamous continuing to hit away at this tower. And IGB just do not have an answer. They keep on just getting ran at. And Sakata here, he's getting all of his mana drained. It's a good bit of damage. That was not the dirtiest one in the world. And Paparazzi actually is able to get the initiation. They take down the Oracle. Not a bad start. Looking for more, though. Can they do it? Ben Jazz up there as well. Matthew ends up accidentally kicking, it looks like, one of the Queen of Pain. So she's still going to be back there. Tomato is going to end up expiring on that Aegis. Matthew Yule Scepter trying to keep himself alive, but they're still going to be able to get the X back. He kicks Paparazzi away. Still off to the side. Tomato trying to bring down Sakata. The Shrine, is it going to be enough to keep him alive? It looks like the answer is yes. Just barely left alive on 100 HP, but I don't know if it's going to end up mattering. The bottom lane of Barracks is still down. They catch the X and everything else onto King Tekka, and he is also going to die. But they only have one lane of Barracks left. Great engagement by Paparazzi right there. Normally, there are, they, I think the Oracle showed because the Batrider was dead, and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, there's no problem, right? And then he gets bursted down almost immediately at the start of the fight due to Alchemist popping his BKB and blinking in. So that was pretty good for them. They had to blow all their shrines, but totally worth it to have a chance to come back in this game. And this is the same team that played the 120-minute game just yesterday uh, against Empire and were able to last out that whole distance. Their high ground is awful. After you lose your first ranks, I think Batrider loses a lot of value because you can approach from multiple angles. Also, okay. they've been super prepared for him, like, so looping around in the trees. And, yeah, it's true that Alchemist doesn't get hurt as much as other heroes when you get the super creeps in the lane, but... I mean, if you think about it, there are a lot of good Ags upgrades to give away if it goes to, like, super, super late, but it feels unlikely that they're going to be able to hold out for that long. Like, the other day, they had great abilities to, like, push out creep waves and stuff. Yeah, this game is way different in that regard. They're not... They're, they're supposed to have the, adva the gold advantage the entire game. It's not meant to... They're, like, maybe a little bit rough before the Radiance, but after the Radiance, their, their lineup's ideally supposed to be smooth sailing, and he doesn't have the, the core items that he needs to farm. He doesn't have Manta. He doesn't have Manta. Well, Echo Slam comes out, and they actually Glimmer Cape to get him away! Oh, King Tekka, he wanted glory, but he's just going to fall instead, most likely. Although the stun comes through, able to hit onto two, and that's going to be that already dead Kunkka. He couldn't kill him off in the duration of the lasso. Excel came in to save his life, but he is eventually going to die nonetheless. Nice Blast goes out as well. They kill off Super Benjaz! Infamous! A lot of questions need to be answered as they try and formulate why they actually want to break high ground because that was certainly not the way to do it. Cocky plays from course. <laughs> yeah, that was that was odd. Um, he did have his BKB that he used in that fight too, but a 2300 gold swing? Yeah, there's... It's okay. Uh, Yules is the Quap, able to purge off the Orchid. Sakata's still looking for more. Doesn't quite find it, though. Good blink away. Well, this is good. It gives Infamous a little bit of time to reevaluate life choices, you know? Mm -hmm. Figure out what they need to do in the next one. 
uh, for them, like obviously that's not the way that you want to take the fight. But what is like that that path to to winning the game? Do you need to try and like find a pickoff as somebody? There's so many the things lines? they could do. They can wait for Aegis yeah. and Cheese. They could smoke in through top. They can smoke in through bottom. They can slow siege with like solar crest and heals. Uh, they can look for solo pickoffs with Earthshaker on the side lanes. There are so many things they can do right now. Oh no, Matthew, this is the gem. That's not one of the things that they want to do. But it happened. Now only a 9,000 net worth lead where it was once shooting towards 20,000. I, I mean, you know, normally you say it's, they're not going to get picked off over and over again, but that's starting to happen. When's the point where you start to really start to feel this as infamous? If they push with next ages and get white. Okay. Then I would start to be scared. But right now it's just yeah, a little bit of feed here and there. It's not looking good for them, but Alchemist has Maelstrom too, so he has kinda of prepared to deal with his PL. PL I believe has butterfly completed. Uh not quite yet. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's butterfly completed. Okay. Only 1,700 HP on this guy. Uh, Quap did finish off her BKB. Ooh, are they going to go for a smoke before the ages? Can they kill Paparazzi before he pops his BKB? Seems rather unlikely, but possible. Fight is actually out front as well. Oh, God, who are they? Are they really going to go on this? Quinteca, he's looking for an opening. He echoes nothing! Oh, buddy, that that's not the play in July. Thought about going in there. Oh, man. <laughs> it's tough because even if he BKBs and gets that off, they can still lasso him. And then Alchemist can pop his BKB. So, oh, Alchemist. A tight pickle. The supports right now from IGV really winning them the games with the defensive items and... Yeah. Can it work? Speaking of which, another Glimmer Cape on the way for Super and... Well, he's locked and loaded, ready for a long one. He's got the 60 GPM talent going. Yeah, these Glimmers have been pretty useful for them. I believe they lost a gem in the last engagement, a second gem lost. Little Scepter, Kunkka. He'll be brought back in just a second with the X. Paparazzi is forced to throw this stun here. And himself some nice little gold there from all of the illusions. Continues the farm up. Do you think it's worth it to go for like if if he does start pulling ags at some point, is it is it ancient apparitions that goes to first? Maybe bat. Okay. Kunkka is last. Okay, <laughs> that's for sure. Or Quab. I think Kunkka is last. Ancient Apparition is pretty good. I would say Bat than AA. Maybe AA than Bat. I don't know. One of those two first, depending on how the game goes. It's still too early to decide. He still needs a little bit from the owner, and then he needs like 6,000 more gold to have Scepter and buyback. I really do like uh, Quops as well, at least for, at least for the cooldown. But yeah, the fights happen so infrequently, though. I think early in the game it's great, but yeah. this late into the game where you're seeing a fight like once every Echo Slam cooldown, you might as well have had it at the original cooldown anyways. Well, speaking of Echo Slam cooldown, Quinteca been wanting to use that spell on cooldown, and he's walking forward. Fissure opens up Echo Slam as well. No chance for a BKB, although Quinteca used one. And now they might be able to force the buyback from the Alchemist. Yeah, very hard to split push out all three lanes for Shaker. Shaker is one of the best heroes at dealing with split pushers because his burst is so fast and he's good against BKB. Ooh, Alk buys back. They've caught one at least. This is Matthew in some trouble. The stun is not going to be able to come out as of yet. They throw it onto the Illusions instead. Matthew is gone. And so is the rest of Infamous. They are backing out. That is a value Earth Spirit that's right there. Value. That's what you love to see. Oh, they actually are in the area still. Quinteca, he's tempting fate. He wants to go for these. And Super certainly in trouble. In July also, they popped the BKB in time, but he is gone in an instant. Just got blown the hell up. Now dog fights outside of the base as well. What is he doing here? He still gets out okay. But Infamous showing the net worth lead now. And to build it. Kill out, game over. Pretty unreliable without Echo, though. Uh, they got to work it off on the Weaver. 
Help us be Fate Seedic to stay alive. Yeah, do you, uh, do you wait now for the Echo Slam? Well, I guess not if you're Tomato. He's just not afraid. Uh, but the blink forward, tried to dodge that one away. Doesn't happen yet. Quinteca is still there. Looking for that opening. BKB did not get popped by Paparazzi. And he instead is dead. And now this should be the GG coming out. IGV, it looked like it could have been something, but it was never meant to happen. Not much more to say about that game. We covered most of the grounds for that. IG Vitality probably should look up some counters in PL real fast. <laughs> and or or just ban it on the first phase. I right. think either is important. Uh, I don't know. I I think with the first phase A, they're like, oh, maybe we can sneak an elk in here. Maybe we can. <laughs> Didn't work out. It was a it was a kind of cool strat to see, and I always love seeing a little bit of alchemist in the games, uh, particularly when he loses. Nothing against IGV, but that hero is, it had its place, it had its time, and now it's time to move on from it. Uh, but it's time to move on as well. The game number two of this, Infamous versus IG Vitality, the final day of group stages. We're going to continue our coverage in just a few minutes here on Stream Four. Lyrical and Merlini, your two casters. We'll see you guys in a few. <laughs> 